For the source of this presentation, please go to the YouTube video, Noam Chomsky, The Machine, The Ghost, and the Limits of Understanding, as given at the University of Oslo in September of 2011. Dr. Chomsky approved this visualization of his ideas by me on Canada Day, 1st of July, 2016. I am grateful for his permission and hope to help illuminate and share his clear and insightful ideas. These images are available on Flickr as Noam Chomsky Visualization 1 to 21 under a Creative Commons license. The idea of Mysterianism is commonly ridiculed today. The idea that there are mysteries in nature about which we will always be ignorant. The key figures of the scientific revolution did not ridicule Mysterianism. They accepted it. The mechanistic view of the world, that Newton exploded, saw the universe as a big clock-like object that we could fully explore and understand. In this mechanistic view, motion could only be caused by the collision of one physical object with another. This is also our common sense notion. Modern research in cognitive science supports Locke by indicating that this common sense idea is in large part genetically determined. Young infants recognize causality as being due to contact. These are the limits of our common sense. Newtonian gravitational attraction goes beyond our common sense. René Descartes stated that we may not have intelligence enough to understand the workings of the mind as in the case of language, a main concept for him. He came to realize that language has what has come to be known as a creative aspect. Every human being, but no beast or machine, has this capacity to use language in ways that are appropriate to situations but not caused by them, a crucial difference, and to formulate and express thoughts that maybe are entirely new, and to do so without bound, may be incited or inclined to speak in certain ways by internal and external circumstances, but not compelled to do so. This was a mystery for Descartes, and remains a mystery for us. It quite clearly is a fact. Descartes continued that even if the explanation of our creative use of language and other examples of free and coherent forms of action lay beyond our cognitive grasp, as it apparently does, that is no reason to question the authenticity of our experience. Quite generally, he said, that free will, which is at the core of this creative capacity, is the noblest thing we have, and there is nothing we comprehend more evidently or perfectly, so it would therefore be absurd to doubt something we comprehend and experience so intimately within ourselves, namely that the free actions of human beings are undetermined. Action at a distance, or gravity, could not be understood in mechanical terms. Newton could not find a physical cause for gravity. He famously said, I frame no hypotheses. Newton's laws describing the workings of gravity were not occult, but only their principles were occult, unknown or possibly unknowable. Newton commented that an understandable account of gravity had not yet been discovered. With the word yet, he may have indicated a hope or expectation that it would become understandable in time, but 20th century science dashed the hope of us ever knowing nature in a true or accurate form. The best we can do is to develop intelligible theories of the world. Intelligibility is today dismissed as absurd, as Newton knew, a purely mechanical material description by science of nature was proven to be fruitless by Newton. 
In 1927, Bertrand Russell stated that chemical laws cannot at present be reduced to physical laws. Linus Pauling soon showed that chemical laws will never be reduced to physical laws. The idea of physical laws is erroneous. Philosophers refer to this as the perceived explanatory gap, and the gap has never been filled since Newton first exploded the fictitious mechanical model. Bohr's model of an atom, one many of us learned about at school, is only an instrumental interpretation, a calculating device with no physical reality. In new biology, the idea that minds are emergent properties of brains, though emergences produced by principles that we do not yet understand, may be recapitulating errors from the 1930s in chemistry when it was believed that chemical laws would someday be reduced to physical laws. Hume asserted that we may look forward to unifications in science, but not reduction. This is a much weaker goal. Human explanatory power is not only limited but does not even reach to the most elementary phenomena of the physical world. We are reduced to simply finding intelligible theories. Rats cannot solve prime number mazes. A problem falls within the cognitive range of an animal. A mystery falls outside of the cognitive range of an animal. What is a mystery for rats is not so for us, but human cognitive capacities also have limits. We have problems and mysteries too, and science, working away at the edges of the known and finding hard problems there, may establish the boundary between human problems and mysteries. If there were no limit to human understanding, then there would also be no scope. A human embryo has the capacity to grow into a human being, and not a mouse or amoeba. The same holds true in our cognitive domain. As artists know, with no rules or constraining boundaries, there can be no creativity. Charles Peirce applied evolutionary theory in observing that major discoveries in science are often made independently and at about the same time. It appeared to him that some inherent principles seem to be guiding human inquiry, like the typical pattern that all children show in coming to terms with experience, including the systematic pattern of child language development, making sense of messy reality that booming, buzzing confusion, as William James put it. Pierce called this an abductive instinct that sets a limit on admissible hypotheses so that only certain explanatory schemes can be entertained, but not infinitely many others, all compatible with available data, as Hume also believed. Pierce argued that this instinct developed through natural selection, but this argument is completely untenable. The serious and challenging problem remains for thinkers today to determine the innate components of our shared cognitive nature. A different creature, say a Martian, might regard human mysteries as simple problems, just as we wonder about the problem of rats to run prime number mazes, not a mystery to us. It is an error to ridicule the ghost in the machine. Newton did not exercise the ghost. Rather, he exercised the machine and left the ghost intact. And so, incidentally, Newton set the study of mind on a new course, making it possible to integrate the study of mind within science. Newton may very well have realized this. What Newton called spirit which is something he could not identify, might be the cause of all movement, including the power of moving bodies by thoughts, both human and animal. Is all matter alive? Locke stated that we cannot say that matter does not think. 
we cannot reject this possibility because of the limitations of our thinking. We still have no concept for what the physical is. The brain is a special organ designed to create thought, just as the digestive system is designed to digest food. The brain makes coherent the booming, buzzing confusion, as William James put it. The brain takes sense data and experience and creates from it an idea. The mind secretes thought. We cannot understand it, but simply accept it as true, in the same way as we must accept gravity without understanding the how of it, as Newton had illuminated the mind-body idea is unformulated because we still do not have a coherent theory of body, the physical, and material. It is fair to conclude that the hopes and expectations of the early scientific revolution were dashed by Newton's discoveries. One conclusion, reinforced by Darwin, is that while our cognitive capacities may be vast in scope, they are, nevertheless, intrinsically limited. Some questions that we may like to explore may well be beyond our cognitive reach. We may not even be able to formulate the right questions. The standards of success in science may have to be lowered again, as happened very dramatically before, when Newton's ideas caused the collapse of mechanical philosophy. Another conclusion is that the mind and body problem can safely be put to rest since there is no coherent alternative to Locke's suggestion. This opens the way to the study of mind as a branch of biology, much like the rest of the body. Many of the early leading questions of the scientific revolution have never been answered and may never be. Thank you.